Cheater, cheater, where'd you meet her? Answer, at the convenience store. Welcome to Camp I Planet, I'm Mac, and today we're taking a look at the Cheetah Single Grain Whiskey from Suntory, a product that, despite its ready availability, is emblematic of the unique development of Japanese whiskey. Whiskey consumption was growing dramatically post-World War II, and distillers were expanding both their capacity and their offerings. Due to this heated competition, everyone was trying to up the quality of their blends, partly through a focus on their grain whiskey. Due to the adversarial nature of the origins of Japanese whiskey, distilleries haven't swapped stocks like they do in Scotland. Distillers had two choices, import more whiskey or build another distillery. Suntory was producing grain whiskey at their Chico and Osuki factories, but these were not specialist grain whiskey facilities. Suntory's second master distiller, Kezo Saji, campaigned for such a facility and he got his wish in 1972. That's when Suntory built the Chita distillery. Well, Technically, Sungrain did, a joint venture between Suntory and JA, Japan Agriculture. It was renamed Suntory in 2019. It was conceived as a grain whiskey powerhouse with two sets of 39 meter tall, four tower column stills. It's the biggest distillery in Japan, extending over 50,000 square meters and with an annual production capacity of around 5.5 million liters. It's located with production in mind too. It's situated on the Chita Peninsula in Aichi Prefecture, overlooking Ise Bay, and it's built next to a huge Japan agriculture grain silo and a port. Suntory has always been strangely secretive about the Cheetah distillery, and perhaps that's because it looks like a giant petrochemical plant rather than a twee Scottish distillery. At first, Cheetah provided whiskey for Suntory's blends, such as Kakubin and Old, using mainly corn, but also rye and wheat within its multiple column distillation process. The Cheetah distillery makes three types of grain whiskey. Heavy type uses the wash column and the rectifying column. Medium type adds the extraction column and clean type adds the purifying column. This diversity is quite rare amongst grain whiskey distilleries as most only produce heavy type. They're mainly aged in white oak, but Spanish oak and wine casks are also used. There's no cask storage space at Chita, so the whiskies are aged at the Ormi and Hakshu aging cellars. Despite being founded in 1972, Drinkers had to wait until the year 2000 to sample some pure Cheetah product. That's when a Cheetah single grain whiskey was released, a 12 year old, but was only sold at the distillery shop. This was followed by an Aichi Prefecture bar and restaurant exclusive bottle, believed to contain 10 to 12 year old liquid. Honorable mention should go to this 2011 Scottish Malt Whiskey Society single cask four-year-old bottling. On the 1st of September 2015, this replaced them all. The Cheetah Single Grain Whiskey, originally a Japan-only release, is started to be sold overseas from the summer of 2017. We've had other delights from Cheetah since then. 2018 saw the start of the essence of Suntory Whiskey. Two of those bottles have featured blends, which feature Cheetah Grain, and two of them are single grain releases from Chita, including 2020 Sakura cask finish blend, some of the juice of which may have made its way into 2021's Hibiki Blossom Harmony. Back to the star of today's show. What's in this bottle? Suntory's fifth generation chief blender, Shinji Fukuyo, was brought in to select the grain combinations. He settled on a blend of 10 whiskies, including light, medium, and heavy type, aged in Spanish oak, American oak, and wine casks. Now, if you look at the ingredients, it doesn't just say grain, it also says malt. And this has been added to enhance the flavor profile, possibly a touch of smokiness. The bottle has been branded to comfortably sit alongside the no-age statement releases from sister distilleries, Yamazaki and Hakshu. The Shodo calligraphy for the kanji, the Chinese characters, was written by Tansetsu Ogino, who also designed the kanji used on the Hibiki whiskey series since the first Hibiki in 1989. The second kanji, which reads ta, has a long curved stroke called the Hidari Herai, releasing the stroke to the left. And you can see here it bounces slightly upwards like the wind. 
That windy, airy image of the brand is prevalent through its advertising, which is clearly aimed at the younger generation. It utilizes young actor Takeru Sato, famous for his leading roles in the Kamen Rider and Ruroni Kenshin franchises. Even the seal at the top of the bottle evokes blue skies and the ocean. The bottom of the label says Chita Joryusho Kinse, which means Chita Distillery Select. Another way of translating that would be Distillers Reserve, which is what you see on foreign export bottles. It's that classic Suntory 43% ABV, and in Japan, the RRP is 4,180 yen, about $38. Compare that to the no age statement Hakushu and Yamazaki, which are about 4,620 yen, and that tells you a lot about how this is positioned relative to the other two. I've got a small favor to ask. If you're enjoying the content on Kampai Planet, please share it with all your drinks loving friends. It would mean the world to me. Kampai. Let's check out the color. That's a bright pale gold. And you know what makes it even better? It's natural color on the nose. Well, the first thing that hits you is the honey. There's also vanilla, sherry, creme brulee. I love creme brulee. On the fruit side, I'm mainly getting banana, but there's also some apple as well. We've also got some grain notes, some corn, some hay, and a slightly off note of acetone, probably expressing the youth of the whiskies in this blend. Kampai. It's pretty light and it's not as sweet as the nose suggests. More floral on the palate, that honey's still there and that caramel's still there, some mint and some salinity. But despite its lightness, there is some pretty decent mouthfeel. I've heard that at least some of the wine casks used to age this are Bordeaux wine casks, and you do get some hints of grape in here. I do love actually the way that grain whiskey does express its casks very well. I'm back to nosing it to try to enjoy more creme brulee. It's a pretty clean finish of medium short to medium length. There's some heat on the medium side of that and a little bit of bitterness and astringency, which slightly, slightly spoils the end of an otherwise very smooth dram. So what's the verdict? Well, if you're one of those tipplers who demands high ABVs, cask strength and bold finishes, then this isn't gonna set your world on fire. In fact, literally, because light is the name of the game here. If on the other hand, you want to experience the wide breadth of aqua vitae, then this is elegant, approachable, and deliciously sweet stuff. It's a solid single grain whiskey, if you want to get into grain whiskey, or just to introduce people to whiskey full stop. I love sipping it neat, but I've also enjoyed it with a cube of ice in there, in cocktails, and also in a classic Japanese highball. Should you buy it? At the Japanese RRP of 4,180 yen, around 38 US dollars or 27 British pounds. Absolutely, but it's commonly found overseas for double that. For example, in UK supermarkets for around 50 quid. And at that price, I say, if you really want to try it or you've got the funds to deploy, then go for it. But if you're looking for value in your whiskey, then it's not going to be found in this bottle at that price. One to pick up when you're next in Japan, perhaps. Grain whiskey is very much underappreciated. Cheetah is Suntory's unsung hero, and not all heroes wear capes. Until next time, kanpai!